everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name's Claire and this is Yoli. I make videos all about houseplant care, sharing tips and tricks I've learned over the years to help keep your plants happy and healthy. And in today's video, I thought it'd be quite fun to do a little growth update, a kind of then versus now video, showing you what they looked like then and showing you what they look like now. Wow, this is the worst intro I've ever done. But yeah, I hope you enjoy it. Let's get into it. So it was really, really weird looking back over my plants for this video because there's been quite a lot of changes, like subtle changes that I haven't really noticed because I see them every day. But when I put them side by side, I'm like, whoa, that's crazy. And also I just found it so uncomfortable going back and watching my old YouTube videos. I don't know why I was so awkward. I'll probably be saying that about this video this time next year, but we'll see. <laughs> So the first one that I want to show you is my golden pothos, which I showed you back in December 2020, which was just over a year ago now. I've got this devil's ivy plant, which actually started from just one cutting years ago. But I'm going to just hang it right in the middle. Oh, try not to bring the curtain rail down. So this is 15 months worth of growth. I might actually have to stand up because she's got so long. It's unbelievable. I would say she's... So that's her touching the floor. She's up to there on me, stood up, which is just ridiculous. She is such a fast growing plant. I know I've spoken about her before and she's 100% one of my all time favorites. I know she's not a mega rare plant, but I just adore her so, 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 so much. And her growth towards the bottom here now is getting so big. Like if you compare it to her leaves at the top, which were tiny, she's just doing so, so, so well. I did propagate this one from cuttings ages ago. She's gone absolutely crazy and I'm so proud of her. She's such a low maintenance plant, so ridiculously easy to care for. I just love her. Look at how she's so long. I could, I could wear her as a scarf nowadays. There we go. And then the next one's my Euphorbia aquarensis, which I'm going to compare to February last year because I put this plant on my fastest growing plants list in a video recently and lots of people were like, that's not a fast growing plant. And I beg to differ. This is Eleonora. She's a Euphorbia aquarensis, uh, basically commonly known as a cowboy cactus. Fun little fact for you, she's actually not a cactus. She is just a succulent, but obviously often mistaken for a cactus. So 13 months later, this is her now. And oh my goodness, she is so, so, so heavy. I don't know if I can even fully get her in the shot. Yeah, there we go. Look at all that new growth as well. It's so beautiful. This is just, this is her favorite time of the year. I know we're in growing season. Oh, I need to pick her up, pick her up here. But yeah, I know we're in growing season, but she's just suddenly kicked into action these last few weeks and has just produced so much new growth. I would say from about there has been new growth in the last couple of months. And She's just doing amazingly. She's the easiest plant in the world. I know I said that about the pothos, but this one, honestly, I think I water her kind of every three weeks or so, only when the soil is pretty much bone dry. And she just, she just does her thing. She really doesn't require much care, but she's beautiful. And I just love how kind of chunky she's got in this last 13 months, because before she was just a little bit leggy. She kind of looked like a cactus that had been stretched. And now she looks like cactus succulent you know what I mean now she just looks like a big beefy kind of statement plant and yeah I absolutely whoa adore her and then this one's my string of pearls that I showed you about five months ago another great house plant that's not very expensive is the string of pearls it is such a lovely plant and this is her today she is doing so 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 well and as you can probably tell I actually transferred her to a smaller pot which is something that I don't do very often but the pot she was in before was really tall and her roots weren't able to reach the bottom so she was kind of just getting a bit waterlogged and wasn't doing amazingly so I thought oh okay I'll pop her in a smaller pot and see how she does and she is doing brilliantly she's just such a beautiful plant I know I've banged on about texture before but the texture of this plant is just unbelievable I just love it so 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 much oh god I know I'm such a geek but yeah I just love it it's beautiful and it looks gorgeous with my other hanging plants I actually probably think she's going to be ready to be moved up a pot size in the next few months I'd say because she's very 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 full now and she's pushing out a ridiculous amount of new growth but I'm so proud of her I I love her I love all of these ones I've got so many memories with them but this one's doing well and she's the best 
And this next one's my variegated spider plant, which when I first showed you her back in April last year, she was literally just a teeny tiny propagation. But also I just wanted to show you this little spider plant I've got here that's propagating in water. It has literally only been in water for about two days. They literally grow roots so quickly. I know you don't have to put them in water, but I just really like watching the roots growing, so. And this is her now. Look at how much she's grown. I'm, oh, I just absolutely adore this plant. And again, I find her really easy to look after. She's really given me no grief at all. It was when I first put her in my grow cabinet, that's when I started to notice her kind of properly kick into action, give me some amazing growth. And now she's looking like a pretty mature plant. I propagated this one for my mum's big plant and I'm kind of thinking she's getting to the stage where she could start giving me some babies herself soon. I'd be so happy if she did. I could I could fill my house with spider plants. I really do love them that much. She's gorgeous. These next two are ones that if you've been watching my YouTube channel recently, you'll probably have seen quite a lot of updates on. They are the plants that I found in the skip two and a half months ago now. And their growth has just absolutely blown my mind. They are Thormatophyllum bipinati fidum. There we go. Oh my God. Whoa, there go the scissors. Look at that. There we go. So now I've got two separate plants. And in just two and a half months, this is what they are looking like now. And I'm just so, so, so proud of them. I didn't know if they were going to do anything at all because they'd been out in Storm Eunice, which was a really, really bad storm that we had here in the UK. And I didn't know if they were going to make it, but they're turning into beautiful plants. And I mean, if this is two and a half months worth of growth, then just think what they're going to be like in six months. I think they're going to be ginormous. And I didn't really anticipate that when I first found them because I can't really fit any more big plants in my house at the moment. So ah, I was going to say maybe I'll give them away or sell them, but I've, I don't know why. I've got so attached to these plants. I think probably because they were absolutely nothing and I've watched them kind of come back to life. And now I feel like I can never part with them. So, so yeah. I think these two are the definition of hardy plants. They have been through, as I say, they've been through the storm, they've been through colds, they've been through being chopped back to nothing, their whole root system being chopped back, and they're still doing amazingly. So I would say if you're a beginner and you're looking for a really hardy, really fast growing plants, then these ones are a very, very, very good idea. I could not recommend them more personally. <laughs> And next is my Alocasia Silver Dragon that I got in my House of Kojo order six months ago now. Look how tiny it is. Oh, it's so gorgeous. Considering it's only got three, it's got fourth leaf on the way, but three leaves and it's so small and fragile. I'm so impressed that there's no damage on this. Yeah, look at that. So I heard that for alocasias, these ones are actually quite slow growers. And I don't really know if this is slow or fast in six months, but she's doing really, really well. I haven't shown her that much on my channel, to be honest. And I don't know why, because she's a beautiful plant and she's got a gorgeous new leaf coming there. Her leaves are just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. I think that one there was the original leaf that she had when I first got her. And since then, oh my goodness, you can see they are getting, they're getting so big. That's the, that's the most recent one. And I feel like this one's going to be even bigger. She is probably due, yeah, she's due for a repot. I've only repotted her once in the last six months, but now she's kind of got going. I feel like she probably needs some attention. Again, she's been in my grow cabinet and has just been getting on so, so, so well in there. Good heat, good light, good humidity. And that is exactly what Alocasia's like. She's, she's beautiful. She has also got a couple, and I don't know, I might need to put some clips in if you can't see properly, but she's got a couple of little bulbs. Yeah, I'm gonna have to put some clips in. Oh, you can see that one there, a couple of little bulbs coming up from the soil and they're sprouting as well. So I'm trying to figure out whether or not I want to divide them from the mother plant or just let her become a really big, full, bushy plant. What do you guys reckon I should do? Do you think I should divide them and make new plants or should I let her keep going? I don't know. Let me know in the comments. And then this one's another one that I've kind of mothered from a very young age. This is a variegated aloe vera that I showed you in February last year. I'll put the clip in in a minute. But this one's one that I found as a little pup in the soil from the mother plants when I was doing my shop. And I was like, oh, I'll take that out and I'll try and propagate it. And she's done amazingly well. She's a little bit wobbly. I'm not sure how well established her roots are, but she is doing so well.
Just look at her now. She's absolutely huge. And not only is she a big full plant herself now, if you can see around the bottom there, she's actually pushing out even more little pups. So I could technically take them off, divide them and create new plants again. I don't know, again, I don't know if I wanna do that or not because I kind of just want to wait for her to fill the pot, but she's been a very slow grower or has she been a slow grower? That's that's just over a year's worth of growth. I guess, yeah, they're not the quickest growing plants in the world, but succulents tend not to be. But she's just turned into such, such a beautiful plant that I feel like I'm just never going to be able to part with now. But yeah, I love her. And then this one, I would say, is probably the fastest growing plant in my collection. It's a Raffitophora tetrasperma, and I will put a clip in of it from five months ago. This next one's known as Monstera minima, but its Latin name is Raffitophora tetrasperma, which is just the most satisfying name in the world to say because it's got those gorgeous monstera splits in the leaves. So in just five months, this is what it looks like now. It is so big that it doesn't even fit on camera. I feel like this plant, it's probably an exaggeration, but I feel like this plant literally gives me a new leaf a week. It's crazy. Like it only just popped out that little leaf. Oh, that little leaf the other day. And already it's got a new one coming that I think will probably be out in the next few days but it's just gorgeous. I did have it on a moss pole, but it outgrew its moss pole. So for now it's just staked with a bamboo cane. And I'm kind of thinking when I move, I might just let it kind of crawl up the wall because I love it when I see them doing that. And I just think they look so beautiful. But yeah, I do, I have propagated this plant as well. And I'm not sure if I want to chop her again. I kind of like the way that she's growing now. And yeah, I just, although I love propagating a lot of my plants, when I see them producing really gorgeous growth, I'm kind of like, I want to just let you keep going and not interrupt that at all. And the other thing as well, the auxiliary buds on the stem here, they're all pretty much popping at the moment. So I think, can you see like there, I think I'm going to get some beautiful growth coming out to the sides as well, which I don't think I've ever actually seen on this plant. I've definitely never experienced it with this plant before. And I can't really imagine yet what it's going to look like and whether or not I will have to kind of pot her slightly differently if I let her continue to go up or if I kind of allow her to branch out to the sides. I don't know. I don't know, but I just love her. She's beautiful and I'm just, yeah, so impressed with how quickly she's grown. The next one is the one, the big one behind me, my variegated monstera, which I'm going to show you a clip from February last year. So again, in just over a year, she has just, oh my goodness, she's gone crazy. I did have my fiddle leaf fig here, but I think I'm going to swap it out for my variegated monstera, mainly because, as you can see, it is desperately in need of a new moss pole, and I haven't got around to doing that yet. So at least for now, the wall will offer it some support. So in that clip that I just showed you, bearing in mind she was put on a table there and she was raised up. This is her now, she's on the floor. This is how big she is now. She is literally touching the ceiling and I'll try and stand up so you can get an idea of... <laughs> Hang on, let me stand next to her. So yeah, that is her. That's probably my head height just there and She's just given me so much beautiful growth. I just, oh, she's, she's, my, she's my dream. I don't want to chop her, but I know that because she is now touching the ceiling, I'm probably going to have to do it soon unless I can move house very, very quickly, which would be amazing. So fingers crossed for that because I don't want to have to chop her, but she's just been the most insane grower ever. And I know she's not highly variegated. And to be honest, that doesn't really bother me that much. I just love the structure of the plant. I love the way that she's climbing. I desperately need to give her a new moss pole. I know I said that in the video where I spoke about her before, but the moss pole then was down, down there. And now this one is probably about up to my shoulder. And yeah, she's, she's very much in need of a new one, but I need to find a space for her first. And then this one is my pink princess philodendron, which I know I've shown you a lot recently. I did a video on her last week and she is just my pride and joy. I love this plant so much, but I will put a clip in of what she looks like in April last year. Another one that I absolutely love and people go slightly crazy over is the pink princess philodendron. I was also just really surprised at how quickly they grow. Like, I don't know why I thought they'd be slow because they're a philodendron, but this was just a little propagation a few months back and it's popped out one two three four 
about four or five leaves since then. So in about a year, this is what she's looking like today. She is an absolute giant and I'm falling more and more in love with her the bigger she gets, to be honest. I was contemplating chopping her back a little while ago and then she started giving me leaves like that. I don't know if you can really tell on camera how big that is, but it is huge and her growth rate is just insane, absolutely insane. And yeah, now I feel like I'm just gonna have to let her carry on forever until she's as big as that one because I don't think I'm going to be able to bring myself to cut her back. She has got, I can't really see, a really beautiful new leaf coming there. I'm not going to mess with it too much because you know what I'm like, I always end up accidentally breaking them. But yeah, she has done so, so, so well. I grew her from a one leaf rooted cutting about a year and five months ago or some something like that, something along those lines. But in that time, I just... I can't believe how big she's got. I am so, as I say, so, so, so proud of her. And then this one's just a two month update because I've been honestly amazed by the growth that I've seen in this plant in just a couple of months. It's a Hoya Australis Lisa. So at the top here, I'll start at the back. I've got a Hoya Australis Lisa. Australis? Australis, that's how you meant to say it, sorry. Hoya Australis Lisa. Look at her now, two months on. I am just amazed by this one. She's given me so much new growth and Hoyas can be quite well known for being quite slow growing and that is not the case with this one. She is just a really beautiful kind of well-established plant now and she's also and this is what i love she's got loads of growth points coming along here so she's not just kind of a single stem hoya so i'm hoping firstly i feel like i can bring myself to chop and propagate this plant what i'm hoping to do at some point is take a few cuttings propagate them get them rooted and then put them back into the same pot and then hopefully have a really lovely big full plant and from what I know about this plant so far and what I've seen, I don't think that's going to be very hard to do because, as I say, that's just, that's originally one stem and it has given me all of that. So yeah, I'm really, really chuffed with her. And this one's another one that I got in my House of Kojo order six months ago. It's a variegated euphorbia and I haven't actually put these ones side by side yet. So I'm going to be very interested to see this when I edit it, but I feel like she has grown a lot. Oh yeah, look at that. It's massive. Again, this is another one that I don't know why, I just thought it was going to be a lot smaller, so that is a very nice surprise. Ta-da! <laughs> has she grown? I think she has. I really think she has. I can see this lighter patch around the top where all of the spikes are quite soft and not very prickly. That's all new growth and that's, that's kind of been slow and steady. She's not maybe as quick as my other euphorbia, but I feel like she's done really, really well. The annoying thing is, and actually you can't actually tell that much on camera, she's growing in kind of a bit of a curve. So whenever I have her on a flat surface, maybe it'll be easier to see here. Yeah, she's kind of toppling out of her pot a bit. She feels really well rooted and secure, but I'm not really sure if there's anything I can do about that. I've never seen anybody stake a succulent before in this way. So if you know, let me know, but she's just gorgeous. I love her variegation. I love the little, where is it? Yeah, the little patch she's got there. I think it's just lovely. And yeah, I'm not quite sure. I guess I'll just let her grow. She's another one that I'd find it very difficult to chop and propagate again, just because you'd cut off so much lovely growth and it would look a bit strange. I know people do chop and propagate them, but I just, I don't know, I think it would look a bit weird. I think she'd be, I don't want to disrupt her beauty too much. And I know I'm saying that pretty much about all of the plants I talk about. So I would say in a year, a couple of years, I will be able to own no belongings, just have loads of giant plants and no room for me to live. But I'd be quite happy with that, so. This is another one from February last year, which is a Peperomia frost. And at the time when I showed you it, I was just propagating from a leaf cutting. In the past, I've always either used water or moss propagation, but I've heard so much about how actually chopping the leaf in half and planting it in soil speeds up the process. So I am trying that out. So looking at her today, I'm pretty sure some of her leaves are actually bigger than the ones that I started the mother plant propagation from. So yeah she's she's beautiful i love the i love the bluey silvery plants i know i say it all the time but i really do she's just done amazingly and i have repotted her a couple of times because she's obviously getting so full and so big but the amount of new growth i don't know if you can see but yeah the amount of new growth in there that she's still producing kind of makes me think that i'm either gonna have to divide her quite soon or 
give her a prune back, maybe take some more propagations, but then I'll have more plants, or just keep repotting her and she can keep growing. She's also flowering, as you can see, which usually just happens in quite mature plants. So she has clearly matured very quickly. If anybody, probably UK based, because I don't think it would survive overseas, but if anybody ever wants a cutting of this plant, ping me a message on Instagram and I will happily send you one because, because yeah, she's a very fast grower and she's very easy to propagate. And I would love to, I would love to share her with you guys. <laughs> And this one's just a five month update, but I thought I'd do a little update on her because she has produced some really beautiful growth in the last five months. It's my Pilia peperomioides. It's also known as a pancake plant, but they're super easy to care for. You can get full plants for about five or six pounds, or you can get cuttings for kind of 50, 60 P online, which is absolutely nothing. Just look at her now. She's producing some really lovely kind of bigger, more mature growth on some of her leaves and she's starting to stem up quite a lot. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping she's just gonna continue to get bigger and bigger. I did repot this one recently in one of my videos for my Patreon and she had one of those nets around her roots. And honestly, I don't know, I don't know why people do that. I know they're plug plants, but it just, it really affects the overall health of your plants so, so, so much. And I think this one wasn't growing as well as she could have been for a while because she wasn't able to kind of properly get her roots down to the soil and get all the nutrients she needed. So yeah, in the time that I've done that though, she has started to produce some little pups down here. So I think I'm probably gonna divide them soon and get some little plants going. I have also propagated this plant quite a few times in the time that I've had it. And yeah, she's just really easy going, really cheeky and chilled and I love her and she's fantastic. And lastly, this is another one that I showed you in April last year as a very, very young plant that I'd recently propagated from a leaf cutting. This is my white princess philodendron. <laughs> soil just went everywhere. <laughs> Hold the soil in place this time. This is my philodendron white princess. And today she is just glorious again. She pretty much doesn't fit in the camera. She's got so big in this last year and I I just I love her I love her so much I know again I'm saying that about all of them but the variegation on this one is just beautiful I know I said my variegated monstera wasn't highly variegated but I feel like I get my variegation fix from this plant because I just I mean some of her leaves like that one there is beautiful and this one here look at that she has just given me a new leaf as well which whoa. There we go, you can just about see. I've had so many breakages with this plant over the last year just because I'm I'm not careful enough with her. I try to be really careful just because her petioles stick out so far. As you can see, she kind of really reaches out. She gets caught on things so, so, so easily. So she's a very sensitive plant in that sense. You do need to be quite careful with her. But otherwise, apart from that, she's been really, in my experience, really, really easy. I know the one thing you really have to watch out for with these plants is overwatering, and the same goes for the pink princess. They're very, very susceptible to issues caused by overwatering. But apart from that, she's just pretty much just got on, done her thing, given me beautiful new growth. And and yeah, I think definitely staking her helped as well. And this is one thing actually that I should have touched on more in my Pink Princess video recently with White Princess and Pink Princess philodendrons. It's a really good idea to give them something to climb up just because it helps them to kind of grow upwards, chase the light in the best possible way and produce really lovely big growth. But yeah, so that is all of the ones that I was going to show you for today's video. Oh, where do I put her? There we go. Yeah, those are all the ones I was going to show you for today's video. But if you liked this kind of video, if you'd like to see more like this, then do let me know in the comments below. Also, I would love to hear about some of your plant updates, looking at the then and the now and stuff like that. So again, let me know in the comments. But if you did enjoy this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, have a lovely day, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.